Hi, everyone. You might be wondering, where is that uh, beautiful, accomplished Harvard professor? And I am from UPenn, but so two out of three isn't bad. <laughs> I was told to start off with a joke, and I think I just did it. <laughs> so we do have an office, and we like to believe in a very specific an agenda. There is a change coming. There is architecture that could be mobile, it could be animate, it could be sensate. And why isn't that happening now? So the things that we want to show to you today are going to be in a range from the very small, perhaps even wearable, to the, to the somewhat large. So IK Studio actually roughly breaks into two organizations. The first is our office, Ibanez Kim. The second is Immersive Kinematics, which is my research group at Penn Design. Uh, that is co-directed with a roboticist, Mark Yim. But we also believe that there is a larger field outside of architecture. We also believe that those fields have great impact and they can do uh, much to influence what we do. You can see in the past 100 years the incredible advances that have been happening. And in architecture, you can see that there's been advances, but those are, have been um, in theoretical and in experimental work that hasn't really taken on this new media. So here is one particular project that I want to show you. This is a wearable, and if we can say that architecture can be worn, and we do, uh, what claims do we have that prove to you that this is a, a new environment? It is a new device that can shelter you. It can emit cloud so that you can be screened as a wearer from the urban environment when you choose. And from the viewer's point of view, obscures the wearer's identity, their race, their gender, uh, which I find to be a very powerful idea. This is the big gamble of whether this is going to play, and it does. So we want to say, if architecture is about mediating the environment and changing environment, then certainly something like this, where it is a, a, an activated device that you can actually completely billow or completely hide yourself, uh, I think that is an architectural premise, and I think it is valid. Here it is in action, where it takes two people to activate. And you can see how quickly the sort of uh, cloud can envelope you. Here is work now that we're starting to go into the range of robotics. This is the work with my uh, co-director, Mark Yim. He is a specialist in modular robotics at the University of Pennsylvania. That is uh, another kind of robotics, which is more humanoid, and funny enough, he also works on this as well. But the realm that we are most interested in is modular robotics. And why is that? It's because modular robotics can be, it can be variable, it can be different, it can change as needed for the terrain or for the environment. And for us, it can actually produce an architectural idea. When I first saw his pieces moving in these wave gates, these caterpillar-like creatures that crawled across the floor, I immediately asked him, why could this not be bigger and why could we not be inside them? And so he said, sure, <laughs> let's try it. So this is what we have, and this is the first kind of uh, attempt at prototyping that we do. This is a house that you can ride. So we've been working with Robert Lang as well in figuring out how these folded pleat geometries can actually allow this flexible creature to roam across different environments. And if it can move, and it, and it can, could it also actually reconfigure into bigger spaces so that from a single chain you can actually have courtyard types, you can have uh, hallways that grow so that you can actually, af if required, can have triple uh, quadruple uh, size spaces as needed. For example, for a hospital, for a clinic, for a school, and it can become anything that you need as required at that time, and then can become something else. Here's another project that actually builds up a little bit in scale now. We're looking at these actually, uh, we're calling them ciphers. These are pods that we place around the city. Here is one at the Tate Modern in London. Here's another one at the Palais de Tokyo in Paris. And what we consider these to be are these, uh, these uh, reconfigurable objects that have two different phase states. One is something that we call a confessional. You can enter it, and you can whisper your secrets into these objects, and those secrets, if you choose, can migrate to the other pods so that the conversation or the, let's say, the, your darkest fears can be transmitted uh, without anyone knowing who you are to another remote location in some manner like this without judgment of uh, Catholic guilt. <laughs> so
So here's a small video of this, kind of showing where these things can be located and how the actual experience of this can be. So you remove yourself from the city again, and you can be on your own. You can have this moment of respite, and then you can um, say what you want. And the other, uh, the, the other mode of behavior that we wanted it to have was it created noise, so there's this ambience. So what you would have is an object that can emit sound that could be then transmitted, and you can actually change that sound as you want by pushing and pulling these little uh, tetrahedral devices. This is something we just finished, and we're most proud of this, actually, because what is architecture and what is changeable architecture if it can't be demonstrated through the most beautiful art form of ballet. So we were approached by a local Philadelphia company. Uh, we were not so sure if we could do what they wanted until they told us that they were interested in the cyborg manifesto, which, of course, caught our attention immediately. <laughs> so this is the same modular robotic device that is, again, because it's, it's modular, it can become different things. We also had a wearable device that unfortunately did not make it into the show but because of fear that it would set off fire alarms. <laughs> and of course, then a wearable device. So there is the autonomous object, there is something you wear, and then there were these bracelets that would then transpose the movement of the dancers onto a projected geometry. So therefore, the humans became uh, these abstract mathematical forms. And the interesting thing for me when we were doing this was to understand, actually, that uh, the responsive kind of uh, features that we were hoping to get between human and non-human are already there anyway. We didn't have to stretch the, the theory to make it work for the dancers. They could understand it almost immediately. And all, it, was, uh, it was an interesting divide. Whether it worked or didn't work, they could make it beautiful. This is the final project that we're going to talk about, and this is the one that we just um, put forward to the MoMA. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't win it, but I don't mind, because it actually gave us a chance to bring in an integration of many different features. We were collaborating at the highest level, again, with a, with a roboticist, with two local artists, the Dufala brothers. We also worked with a very good structural office, AKT, and we were able to put together something that, uh, as a prototype, could actually uh, have many implications. So here we have this object that can then be unfolded, and if it can be unfolded, then it can be several things as you want. It can become a table or it can become something else. And we implemented this into the courtyard of the PS1, and as you can see, this is a hinge dissection, which really kind of shows a conceptual idea of this object that can unfold and become something else. We made a family of these kinds of objects so that there is a range and there's not just one singular object as architects like to do, but it was actually more of a field condition. So you can see this deployed in the courtyard. And our idea was that given the massive amount of people that come to see these galleries, every single time they come, they wouldn't necessarily see the same courtyard. They can become changed, they can become different. And so this is what I want to leave you with. Architecture is more than just stable, inert geometries. They can be different things. It is up to us to develop them, but it is also up to the public to demand it. Uh, you, there is no way you wouldn't want to have your mobile phones become more and more powerful. There wouldn't be no, any way why you wouldn't want to have your cars be more safe. I hope that you can ask for your houses and the buildings that you occupy to also produce more for you. Thank you very much.